Okay. Uh, this is just to show you the members of the, of the committee and you can see how diverse that, that, that committee is. Now, some examples of some work that's happening. So the National Hispanic Medical Association is working with the National Association of Hispanic Nurses to improve interdisciplinary education. The uh, Convenient Care Association is working with national members to improve uh, uh, and have started a coalition with community partners, with nurses again, to improve care that is happening there. Target Corporation has engaged his clinical nurses and put them in leadership roles. So we're beginning to, to do something. This is all coming from the action campaign. <laughs> Grant making examples. I, as I said, the fund, uh, funders in health have guaranteed that they will help support the implementation of these eight recommendations. And so, you know, if you haven't come up with projects, come up with projects where they can go after those dollars uh, in relationship to particularly one of the, uh, the recommendations. We have this regional action coalition. We, we unfortunately chose a name that makes hospitals shudder. And what that's about is the federal government decided three years ago that it wanted to take some money back. <laughs> And the only way the federal government can do, they, uh, they, they gave some money to some individuals and said, go out there and look, relook at things that have been built and paid and, uh, and see if it was appropriate. And so they got several hundred million dollars back. And they, 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 this was done under something called RATS. And that's why we chose the wrong name. Because these, <laughs> And so we, we start stop calling it regional and start just calling it action coalitions. <laughs> uh, but these action coalitions, which are now in 15 states, we expect to be in uh, the in all states in the United States uh, by uh, the end of this year. So we have uh, additional 10, and those uh, things are the uh, call for. Uh, Papers are, uh, went out and, and we will grant those 10 at the end of July. So if you're from a state that isn't one of the states that's being supported, please submit something. And this is this shows you who's in and who's out. So right now, in terms of the goal, this existing action campaigns, Ohio has uh, things involved. And we hope that they will, Ohio's going to go after some uh, and, and submit. Uh, for this next go round, and that release came out uh, last week, uh, submit for to be part of the funded uh, action post. So nurses must lead at all levels. Collaborative leadership is essential. If we, the goal is like the uh, previous IOM study is uh, about uh, reliable, safe, equitable, efficient, and affordable health care for all. That's the real goal. Transforming nursing education and practice and leadership is, is a strategy to get there. So you must lead, and I would hope that you are going to work with nurse executives and, and, it's, and to implement two to five recommendations. Don't try to take all eight of them on. Just choose two and say, we're going to work these two. It's take students, faculty, nurses from across the state, trustees, and other stakeholders to be able to successfully do this. These are the campaign resources. We Twitter, we Facebook, we do everything to, to be able to get, get the word out. And with that, I'm available to answer any questions.
it's the politics of nursing. Um, my background is in school nursing. And uh, 10 years ago, we were submitting articles to our journal, which is the Journal of School Health. They wouldn't look at anything about childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of it. And same thing with politics. Um, I've only had a call from the mayor's office twice. And once, and the second time was about a very general kind of note I sent home about um, a child's obesity. It would be for a physician, really, and it, it was serious. Um, it's the politics, and I hear you. I hear you alluding to that. The politics of change. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can look at it and say yeah, it's all wrong. But then, like, how did Florence Nightingale clean up the hospital? <laughs> you know, um, if you have a word or two to say, and I can see you're doing it. But when your own magazine journal won't publish, and these were articles that were written by faculty members here, you know, that we were working with. So if you could say a word about that, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, it's a, 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 a little slang a t a term that I use often when I talk about change. Uh, the people, uh, uh, the, you know, change is one of those things that uh, you can never master. So if you try mastering it, you'll, you'll, you'll just end up being frustrated. It's, it's like saying you, know, you want to change culture. You know, culture is strategy for lunch that splits it out. Culture is culture. So you have to just recognize it, it, it exists and move on, move on behind it. So in terms of policy, I, I said several times that we have published articles in Health Affairs, New Journal of Medicine, New York Times, da da da. Why? Because we need different voices. And sometimes the most difficult voice to, to hear is your own or your own group. And so you need to go about doing it across. So I take those same articles uh, that you were talking about and, and say, hey, let's publish those in the American Journal of Public Health. Because they will listen. So you have to be, you know, you have, you have to take this approach of you know, keep it in front of you. What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to achieve? And what we're trying to achieve is to find the most effective strategies to get people to move, to change, to even consider doing something different than they, they had before. And to do that requires you to lead. You know, leadership is everything. Everything else is just effect. If you do not have people willing to lead, you will not have change. So it takes someone being, you know, a stock. You know? A stock is someone who, who, who you know, in the change world is someone who takes risks, who understands that ideas are are, are, are are opportunities and throws it out there and is willing to, to, to go to go do it, to go lead. And, and, and then wait and see what the effect is, instead of trying to predict the effect, because you may not be able to, to predict it. So that's what, what, what I've done. I've been doing this work of social policy and, uh, for many years. My first change that I ever uh, tried to do, and I learned quickly, don't try to push the two times ball up the hill, go around the hill, right? <laughs> Go around the hill. You know, you find a new pathways, and, you, and it's the finding the new pathways. Um, so that, that second recommendation of, uh, of finding, engaging nurses because they, they can come find new pathways, and then diffusing that innovation, decreasing that 17-year gap between the uh, the generation of knowledge to the application of knowledge. That's that's what we have to do. Hope that answered your question. Yes. Yeah. I applaud you on your investment in collaborations because it's been my experience that you can prescribe and you can educate children about um, eating right. But the issue really is the accessibility to healthy foods. We live in the city, in urban areas, in food deserts, where the closest thing you have to accessing food is a bodega. And that's really the issue. So we need the nutritionists. We need the epidemiologists. We need the social workers. We need people in the fields 
to influence policy that will hopefully generate uh, places where people can get the healthy food. Absolutely, but you also need the urban planners, the individuals who will, who will help construct schools and, and not just you know, universities, so that promote physical activity. I don't mean necessarily putting, uh, you know, starting uh, uh, teams. And people say, oh, well, there's no more football in, in high school. Well, in some high schools have decreased it because of liability and you know, of the kids getting hurt. So there's other ways to have physical activity than playing football. So if you you make it so that you know there are no cars that can come into to an area and people have to walk into that area or bike into that area, there's all kinds of ways to go around the hill. But first you have to be willing to go around the hill, and then you have to engage. You got to call that circle. You got to call the first voices in and say, "What do you think?" And you'd be and you'd be surprised at the amount of ideas that will bubble up if you you know. Uh, if you're, you're sincere and genuine when you say yes, we you know we want to hear your thoughts. Just building on the comments of the last two speakers about childhood obesity, sometimes we hear these things and your comments are absolutely right on. But we think, here am I? I'm an individual nurse. You know what can I do? I can't really get the whole coalition together or that kind of thing. And we tend to overlook sometimes the simple yet tremendously powerful differences that we can make as individuals. Mm -hmm. One of the key things that every one of us in this room today can do to try to decrease childhood obesity is to support and encourage the initiation and duration of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. There are tremendous resources out there on the website now, the um, HHS Department of Women's Health, the CDC, and the United States Breastfeeding Committee, usbreastfeeding.org, with the business case for breastfeeding that have wonderful materials. So whether you have a friend, a neighbor, a relative, you can encourage, you don't have to be a nurse on the postpartum unit in the hospital or even an OP nurse. But you can do some of these simple things. And I think there's the whole salient issue behind what the Institute of Medicine report is saying is that every one of us can make a difference. That's right. But we have to start now. And it doesn't have to be large. You know, it just has to be willing to, you know, nurses, according to the Gallup poll, are the most trusted of the health professionals. The only year in 20 years of the, that Gallup poll that we did not uh, come up as number one was in uh, and was 9 11 2001 uh, and that year was firefighters and then nurses were second uh, so using your voice using your voice in in, in small ways with the number of us that, that exist you know you, you can begin to keep that message out there about it's about the, the health of the individuals and the health of the nation uh, not just about uh, no change. Well, thank you all very much. It's been my pleasure to be with you.